Hi, welcome to the Stitch and Post. This is Lori giving us demos of her favorite notions. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. But Lori, take it away. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to show you are things that I pretty much do traditional blocks. I like things to kind of work out at the end and be straight. Triangles have points. <laughs> Little things like that. So I'm going to share a um, couple different cutting things that I do. The, the guide that I use, that I use in class with them, because I teach beginning and beyond beginning classes, plus mystery classes. The triangle ruler. And with the ruler you can cut half square and quarter square triangles. And let's see, pressing and then feasible batting, which I really prefer also. Okay, so let's get started. All right, uh, first we're going to do is cut some strips that are going to be two and a half inches wide. And usually when you start cutting, you have your regular ruler and maybe another one to help get the edge straight. And then you line up the ruler, you cut a strip, you pick up the ruler, you move the strip, you put the ruler back down, you cut the next strip, and continue that way. So using stripology, and it's somewhat still flexible, but it's got some support to it, we'll cut two and a half inch strips. But it's set up, you can cut inch and a half, you can cut three and a half, you can cut three inch strips, and they're just boom, 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 boom. They're a little claim to fame, one of them. It's going to cut your cutting down, your cutting time up to close to 75% less. And it's really accurate in that. So let's start with that. And the other thing, I am backwards showing the cutting. So you're looking this way on it, and I will be cutting the other way. All right, so I have some fabric, and this is for binding. I was asked to cut two and a half inch strips. So first of all, you might notice my cutting mat is showing the back side. I don't pay attention to lines on it, so I just turn it over kind of thing. All right, so what I'm going to do with the strip is it gets folded and then gets folded again. And this pretty much is a no-no with your regular ruler because you cut it with it, fold it twice, and you're always going to get the little wow right in the middle. With this one, you don't get that. So the salvage is right up here. If it comes up and it's teeny bit crooked, I just leave it that way because the salvage end goes away anyway when you line up things to cut. So this goes down, stripology goes over here, and you want to make sure that this fits the mat. You don't want it smaller than the mat because then it's not going to be quite as stable. And it's got this line here, and this is our starting point. Okay. So this is down. I'm going to, I have lines up here, lines down here, and a little spot, kind of almost like a teardrop, or a drop at the bottom and top, which helps with your cutter. Okay, so first of all, cutting. Get it lined up, and you can go clear over there to the, close to the edge, because this is where you're getting your straight edge. And before you start cutting, want your feet both flat on the floor, <laughs> standing up straight. <laughs> it's just it's better than instead of standing this way and cutting or whatever. Okay, so I don't have to hold on really, really tight. I don't have to do this. So there's none of this, oh no, my ruler's going to scoot around. The ruler, the ruler slips sometimes. Yes. Yeah. So... And I do go back sometimes. So there's my straight edge. Okay, I want two and a half inch. So it's right here. Oh, cute. It's got a little square here. So I don't even have to think too hard. I just have to find the squares. 
and cut. How clever is that? Okay, so two and a half, and I'll just go back, five. There it is at seven and a half. Ten. I assume she wants all of That's these strips. So cool. <laughs> you really do need one. And whatever left is at the end is just extra. So there's that. Once in a while, depending on the width of the fabric, you may get a little part mm -hmm. thread that hangs there. But there are my strips. And that is, and that is a, a 45 inch. That's a whole. Yeah, the 44 inch strip. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. That is so cool. All right. All right. So I have to admit, Lori, every time you do something like this, I learn something from you. And I've known you for. We won't go into how long. Right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's sad. Can you use any size blade rotary cutter? Yes. Now the other thing is, um, you could do. If maybe I had the two, you could do two at a time. Just once you get used to the feel of it, kind of okay. thing. Okay. All right. So we've cut strips. If I want to do inch and a half, I would do inch and a half, three, and continue that way. If I want wider ones, like a real, let's do a big strip, six and a half, I do that. And I could keep showing you, but I don't, I don't have a lot of fabric to use. <laughs> it's like, now what am I going to do? I do, okay, let's rephrase that. I don't have a lot of fabric that I just want to cut up into random pieces. Okay. Just to play around with Right. Yeah, I'm going to show you that's next. So you're right with me. Yay. Okay. All right. So let's say you're doing a pattern and it tells you to cut. Tells you to cut some two inch squares. And you need a hundred of them. Okay. So what I would do is line this up. And I could put one on top of it. Or if I have to cut two inch squares of this fabric, and let's just pick another one, because we're going to pick 10 cut right now. And then I had need two inch squares of that. I would do this and put that, you know, with that. And then this would go here. And you have straight lines here, that you can line it up with. Make sure everybody's straight. Go back, get the salvage end off, and we're not going to cut, open the cutter, but we're going to show how it works. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I would get my straight edge, and if I went two, I would do two, four, you know, six, and it's about this fast, really. And then we'd get to the end. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. It's good the cutter wasn't open. <laughs> Okay, then once they're cut, you'd move this. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, so that works pretty well. Now, the other thing is um, with stripology, you can do like two and a quarter inch strips. You just would cut off the, set, the initial straight edge, and then you scoot the ruler over just a quarter inch. Do that, and then you would cut, and then another little. So it says it. You don't say, "Oh no, I can't cut two and a quarter." You can. That one you might have to think a teeny bit more, but it works. Okay. So that's stripology, and with that, the next thing I use quite a bit are the quarter square and half square triangle rulers to cut those pieces. So let's go back and review a little pattern. Your pattern tells you to cut two and seven eighth inch strips, right? To get your triangles, your half square ones. And then it's gonna tell you to cut them into two, two and seven eighth inch squares, correct? And then it's gonna tell you to cut the square half on the diagonal. Okay, and how many chances are there to get off in there? 
Several. Okay, so with this, and there are two, well, initially I used the Omni Grid rulers. And here's a half square one and a quarter square one. And what has happened is Slons and Porter have put them together in one. Mm -hmm. So now instead of buying two, you can buy one. So anyway, so we'll show you the one. So let's get my two and a half inch strip. And I'm going to show you another little thing that happens with this. Instead of just cutting them by themselves, I know that I'm going to sew these to these. This is my background. So instead of cutting them separately, I'll go like this. I'll lay them right sides together. So when I'm ready to sew, they're ready. I don't have to put them together. <laughs> Did you find out something else, Val? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so now with the ruler, and it does come with, let me grab one. It does come with rules. This is very handy to save in case you forget something. Because they have the half square triangle side, which is this one, and then they have the quarter square triangle side. So we'll start with the half square triangle side. They're also based on finish size of your block or your piece. So initially you think, oh, I cut it two and a half inches. But then remember, finish size is what you're going to line this up with. So my finish size is going to be two inches. So I'll put the two inch line down here. OK, or sorry. Two inch line, I'm on the two and a half inch line, but still based, there's the finish size, the two. So it fits on my two and a half inch strip width, strip, and it hangs over at the top. This is that between the two and a half and the two and seven eighths. This is the part that goes away. All right, so cutting. And I would have to turn myself around. Here, I'm left-handed. I get this. But we'll do this. I've taught myself to do this just like on the one edge kind of thing. Then I go back to the right way. Okay, so then it's lined up. So I cut, flip the ruler around. You don't turn it over. You flip it. I tell people to pretend like it, you're going to do it. Yeah, and just do that with it. So okay, you still have cut. the same printing side up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good but, thing yeah. to remember. It. But yeah. you're just going to, yeah, here's the, the frisbee <laughs> off it goes kind of thing. So, okay, so there. Be a deadly frisbee. <laughs> and then there again. And this time, when you come back and pick them up, they're ready to sew. Okay, now if um, you wanted to do a couple different ones, say you were doing a scrappy quilt, you could still line these up and do it the same kind of way. And like I don't need all of this, I just cut what I need and then that way. Okay, and it will cut bigger ones. If you have a wider strip, you know, you would line it up that way. Still going to hang over a teeny bit at the top. This takes care of cutting that two and seven eighth inch square, right? Now the other thing it does, which um, I have like one sitting here. When you get your pieces, you're going to get a pointy end, and you're going to get a flat end, and. It doesn't matter which one you start with, as long as you line up the pointy end. This end, and let's see, this one will show you better. So there's the pointy end. See how that fits in there? And that's the part that you cut off, but it's right where you line it up. Or I could turn it the other way and line it up. Oh, I have too many here. But I could line it up. Well, let's do it like that one, like that. 
it's still going to work. Okay. Then they're ready to sew. And so sewing triangles, I have a couple little things here to show. First of all, this notion is one that you can find at your house. <laughs> we call them bunny tails. I'm sure a lot of you use them, call them different things, but you start with that. Then it's just going to not everything go down when you start sewing. It also cuts back on the amount of thread because you chain things through and just bing, bing, bing through. But the other thing I use when I'm sewing on triangles is this. It has a very positive job. This other kind of job oh, is, is not positive. <laughs> yes, but now it's positive. So this is ready to go through the machine. I line it up ready to sew. And if I'm, can I scoot over here? I'm not going to you sew. Can do whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you. You're so in charge. Mary. Okay, so it would be in there with its bunny tail. Then I sew it through, and as I get close to the bottom, Bing, 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 bing. I'm going to use my seam ripper and hold it there because the machine likes to pull it off the road. And you get down to the end, and the seam will maybe go in. It'll go out. And then when you open up your triangle, it's not a nice square. It's got this little curve at the end. So that's where this comes in. Okay? All right, one more little triangle part to show you with this. Quarter square triangles, when you're cutting these, your pattern will tell you, let's say, cut a five and a quarter inch square. Or first of all, cut your strip. Then cut it into five and a quarter inch squares. Then come back, cut them this way, and cut them that way. More chances to get off. So, with this, again, we want to make sure we use the right side, but these lines are this way. So with the, uh, I would line it down there at the four because that's the size. If I was had two and a half inch strips, that would be the size the square is going to make. It doesn't seem like it should, but it's going to take four of them. And then this cutting is this way and that way. And then this will be there. Let's do another one so you kind of see where I'm headed on this. Line that back up. Make it nice and straight. And this too has just a teeny little part this time that hangs over at the top. See that little that will be over on the strip. So then, when these come back and get opened up, they aren't necessarily this time ready to sew together because sometimes you'd sew them that way. But then this is, there's your quarter square triangle. Oops. Okay, again, I saved a lot of steps. Okay, so let's scoot this teeny bit and at this point, I would have all these pieces cut, right? And ready to sew. So at my machine, I like to pretty much have a nice straight <laughs> seam. And these are out there. Let's hear it. Seams setter guide. It's And they come with a guide in there, which I use these in class all the time, but I have tape on this because it's clear. It's really easy to lose down in there. <laughs> oh, that's find the piece of blue tape and I can find it. So anyway, this is the little seam guide. And it's got sticky and then piece of paper you pull off. But it sits right in here. And it's set up just the right way for that. And then this hook hooks onto your needle. And then you just pull it tight and then push this down and it will go down. Now usually I put it up close to the presser foot. I don't want it beyond the presser foot. But I want it up here because when you're sewing, let's pull this out, you need to line things up up here instead of right up there. 
it's too late. <laughs> yeah, it's already grabbed it. So it would line up there, and then sewing things through, it would just be like this. And you keep an eye on that and just touch it barely up to it and get your quarter inch seam. Now they call it a very scant one because when you do your quarter inch seam and then you go up and over and press, there's thread in there that takes up a little bit of room. And it's like, well, I thought it was right and now it's off. But you forget about that. So, so it's set up to do that. Okay, so let's see, we sew and then we press. And pressing at the moment, I like to, I'm right here with my machine. I have this cute little stand here that this cute little mat sits on. One of the woolly mats and the cute little iron. And with the woolly mat and like your piece, let me see if I have a piece here I could kind of press. I thought I did. Anyway, here's one, we'll pretend. So with the piece, you know, it fits there really nice. The iron should be on. And what's happening with the woolly mat, I don't then have to turn it back over and do the other side. The, it ca captures the heat and pulls it right back up from underneath. So you get it from the top and the bottom all at once. So that saves time too. Okay. Oh Time well, I try to be. <laughs> but I love it. So, okay, so we've covered that, 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 that. All right, now we have our pieces sewn. We have them, let's call this, we have them in our blocks. And if we went to machine quilt, which is nice to do, if you're not doing it with your checkbook, we'll do it with then. I'll show you, <laughs> I'll show you the fusible batting and how well it works and I we have the dream fusible so this is what we have here but it's really easy to use when it comes out of the package and this will be like only bigger it's got the fusible side marked it's got a little bit of different feel to it kind of thing and then the back side this is <laughs> been laying around but anyway it is nice and like feels like batting. So here's one that if I'm, this is a pretend one. So if I'm ready to fuse this, I'm going to take the fusible out of the package and remember which is the fusible side. Because when you put it on your ironing board, I would put it, anyway, fusible side goes up. And then your backing will go on it and it also will be right side up. So then when I press this and you want to make sure when you cut them that they are a little bit bigger because you don't want the sticky getting where it shouldn't. That's not fun with the iron. Or your mat. Or your mat, right. So then pressing this and that this would be bigger that you're on, but just press it on there nicely and nice and smooth. And say you're going along and oh, there's a little wrinkle in the fabric. In fact, I'll make a big one. Uh oh, that was not good. Then you just pull it up, take it back and put it on there. Oh, a black thread. <laughs> a black thread on your white. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So anyway, it's stuck on there. And then next step would be, this is our nice big quilt that's going to go on it. But anyway, that will go on, and I have a little bit of edges. And these are not fusible, so I can iron it out there with the iron. And I usually like to use teeny bit of steam when I put this part on, just because I do, so... You know, they have their directions that you don't need to, but it's part of what I do. So I it's done. About that, though. Okay, so you have to this point, so your back is fused to it, but your top is not. So no, you still have to it's, turn your top down. No, you don't. It sticks. it sticks. I think the steam, in my opinion, when I use the steam, it kind of just feels like it helps hold it on there. So this is pressed. 
This is ready to go. I don't need a pin. If it comes off, I just do that. Or it comes out, you just go back and press it back down. So no pins kind of thing. This is the beginning. <laughs> anyway, so say that little part that came back off, I just put, go back to the ironing board. Or if it's little, I can have my little iron right there and press it on there. And then it's stuck back down again. And you don't find that it moves when you're quilting at all? No, it doesn't move. I'm skeptical. It doesn't. <laughs> Pardon me? How big a project can you use this? You're doing it. Oh, it, they come um, like crib, twin, full. I have not done a big, huge. But um, probably with a twin one, I have done that. And it... You know, I have a more of a board for my ironing board, so it's easy enough to iron on. I'm not doing a lot of scooting back and forth kind of thing. So, no, it, it's not going anywhere. So, so that saves. It is a table runner. This is a sample from boot camp. From boot camp. Boot camp, yes. So, and we do triangles. We do strips. So, um, all right, so that's pretty much, did I miss any little thing? Well, do you like to use flatter when you... Um, Thank you, I missed that, yes. Well, yeah, I I, or I use it over here sometimes on the blocks. Mm -hmm. Or usually it pretty much comes out when, once this is done, the block is bigger, then I happen to have this side size over at the ironing board. <laughs> So the blocks go over there, and that's when the flatter comes out. Once in a while, it gets used here, but it doesn't usually need to be used in that part. So, Okay. One other little thing I like to share, which actually has a digit post on it, is these little rulers. And they are really handy. You know, with um, just, it's two and a half inches wide. Cutting little things, measuring little things, whatever. So, okay. Does it look like I missed anything else? I did well, it awesome, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think that was pretty much it. Thank you. Oh, close the cutter. Close the cutter, that's right. Close Darn. The cutter. Okay.